I am second violist in the Orchestra of Les Mis. That's great. And I'm David Cresswell, and I'm the first violist. So we're, we're the violas on Les Mis <laughs> right now on Broadway. Okay, and tell us a little bit about your backgrounds, how you got started and where you went to school, all that stuff. Great, great. Um, I went to Northwestern um, in Chicago, studied viola. Um, grew up in Hershey, Pennsylvania, so not far from New York, actually. And while at Northwestern, made a contact that um, got me involved with the U.S. tour of Les Mis. So I toured Les Mis for just under three years, uh, was the assistant conductor on the road with that, and then moved on to the Toronto production when, that, when the tour closed in August. Um, went to Toronto and did Toronto as, again, the violist and the associate conductor, and when Toronto closed, then in February, I moved on to Broadway. So my career has been lots of limits. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up in, uh, in Okemos, Michigan, and, uh, and started playing the viola at 10. Um, I went to school in Cleveland at the Cleveland Institute of Music, and I moved here um, about 18 years ago and started working in, in lots and lots of different things. I, um, I started my Broadway career basically shortly after I moved here. I was actually the violist on, and violinist on Floyd Collins, um, the original production of that, which was an off-Broadway off production at that point. Um, and then I subbed on, on various other shows. Um, I subbed on, I think the first show that I subbed on was actually, um, I, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. It's been so long now. Uh, but I stepped on a number of different shows, and then I, I had, um, this is actually my fifth show that I've been on. The other shows that I was on was um, uh, Carolina Change, um, then Color Purple, South Pacific, and last year's production of Follies, and now Les Mis. And in addition to Broadway, I do a lot of other things in town as well. I play a lot of orchestra concerts, do some recordings, um, I do some teaching, chamber music concerts. So it's a great life here. Great. Okay. Um, now, what about getting involved in the musicals in the first place? I remember, Will, we had a conversation one time about uh, with the backgrounds that both of you have that sometimes it's not, people don't think it's a good thing to get involved in musicals, but you guys have, obviously. Um, tell us a little bit about that little stigma that's attached to that. I think, I mean, it sort of comes and goes. I think, when, especially when you're in university, there's this this feeling among string players that you know they're going to practice their Tchaikovsky concerto all day long and you know and and be you know orchestra violin stars. Uh, I I don't I really don't feel it much anymore, especially not in New York. Um, there's this yeah. thing in New York that like work is work, and the Broadway. I mean, the people who are playing these Broadway shows are at the highest caliber. I mean, we have a colleague who's playing in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra this week, which is like one of the best orchestras in the country. Like that's really yeah. crazy. Um, the stigma doesn't really exist here in New York, at least from what I've experienced. It definitely did a little bit coming out of university because there were a lot of kids that really wanted to be these violin stars. Um, yeah. But I think once you get into the into the scene, it's really you know everyone just wants to work and wants to make good music and oh, 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 oh. Sorry. <laughs> are really talented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe David can speak True. more to well, it than I can. There's, but. you know, there, there's a, there's definitely, I, I, there's definitely a lot of things that are that are that are sort of stigmatized when you're in college that that disappear once you actually leave college and you actually work for a living. Um, so there's certainly no stigma about about working on Broadway shows here in New York because it's because it's some of the best work around. Um, and and we are really lucky in our pit. We have a lot of really great musicians that are, you know, do a lot of other things. Um, Will mentioned Pavel, who plays with the Met all the time. I actually play with the Philharmonic a lot. Um, there are lots of others of us that play in lots of other, you know, great things. There's one of us that runs an artist colony in the summer and, you know, out west. Um, so that's one of the things about, about working on Broadway is not only do you get, you know, to work on these, on these great shows with these great other, you know, colleagues and things like this, but you also have a certain degree of freedom to, to pursue other things that you do all the time, and that's one of the great things about about Broadway is that you, you know, we don't, we don't get locked in to doing the same thing all the time. It used to be the sort of that way about, you know, about like 
20 or 30 years ago that if you had a show, you could only do the show and you could never do anything else. And now you actually can do a lot of other things that basically let you get refreshed and let you sort of bring new energy back to the show when you come back to it because you've done other projects that really excite you and things like that. So Yeah, I think it's really good that David mentioned that. I think as college kids, we all thought that playing a Broadway show meant that you played the same show eight nights a week. Right. Or, you know, eight times a week. We thought it was always the same music all the time. And I don't. I think that's where the stigma comes from. And I think we just, you know, when you when you go to school and you, you just assume that that's what they do every night and you don't realize that it's really the foundation that you can then, you know, pursue anything else you want on top of it. Well, that's a, a good answer. Thank you so much. Now, tell us a little bit about Les Mis and exactly what it's like to be there and to be a part of this great show. I mean, at this point, Les Mis is such a history piece mm -hmm. um, and, and it has... You know, I think for a variety of generations, so many of us have grown up on this show. So many of us have been around through so many versions of this show. It's really special being a part of something this big. Mm. Um, you know, it's the audience reaction is really incredible every night. I mean, it's like a rock concert a lot, yeah. of, many nights of the week. The audience, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. I mean, the audience is crazy. They're deafening. Yeah, they are. It's great. It's and it's a wonderful kind of energy. They really like. They actually, they they start screaming at the end of the show, at the end of the first act, and it's louder than anything that's happened that, that the band has put out or anything like that, even in the pit, you know. And it's great. It's just a wonderful sense of energy. People are so thrilled to see this. Um, you know, the lights go down at the beginning. The announcement starts, and people start screaming because they're so happy to be there. It's really great. Yeah, and I think with. You know, th with this new version, with it being, you know, a little bit younger and fresher and, you know, we have Ramin, so there's sex appeal and, you know, it's drawing in so many different people and it really feels like a rock concert. You know, it feels like it's it's not the old antiquated, you know, it's not the old Les Mis, which was, um, again, I think it would be a little outdated now. This piece is so young and fresh and is bringing a young audience and, like, the stage door every night is crazy. I have a hard time leaving the theater. Cause yeah. <laughs> There's just so many people you can't get out. Um, so I think it's really special being a part of this. And the orchestrations are new and really interesting, mm -hmm. and everybody has really good parts, and everybody's part is really intricately involved with everyone else, so you really feel like you're um, part of the group. And our little, I mean, 18, 17, 18-person 18 orchestra sounds huge. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're really integral to the production, and it's a really, I think, really exciting place to be right now. And what about, you were just talking about the stage door a little bit. Do people stop you, or do you get to slip past? Do a lot of people talk to you? Yeah, they're, they're mostly, most of the people are waiting, for the, are waiting for the cast and waiting for autographs, but there are, there are a lot of people who have actually, like, recognized me, and they're actually just like, oh, you guys sound great, and, you know, which is, which is really nice. Um, there, was, there was one thing that I remember. I don't think you got to see this because you came to the party. The very first preview that we did, we had a party across the street afterwards for, for the company, and, and I think you came out after a little bit after me, but when I came out, the crowd was waiting for, for the cast, and they were waiting for something like that, and so I crossed the street, and I was looking at the stage door from across the street, and, and without, without anybody prompting them, this crowd is just, like, is like, waiting to see people, they just started singing from songs from the show, just, like, for themselves, waiting for, you know, the cast to come out and stuff. It was really, it's really wonderful. Hmm. That's pretty cool. And what about the cast? Tell us a little bit about the cast and what it's like working with them. I mean, I think they're all really wonderful. I mean, there's a yeah. lot, there's a ton of talent, and you know, there's been a lot of talk that some of the casting choices are a little bit different than what you would usually expect. And these people have really created these characters in a new light, which is really hard to do given the history of Les Mis. Yeah. Um, I think everybody brings something really fresh to the role. Um, and they're all really great to work with. Ramin is wonderful. Yeah. Ramin, you know, goes out of his way to just be nice to everyone. Um, and that's really remarkable given the amount of pressure that he's under, you know, to create such an, you know, a huge role and to be such an icon. Um, he's just wonderful. And the ensemble is really great. They often sneak into the pit to, like, say yeah. hello to us and chat and, you know, see how we're doing. And I think people understand that... Um, we're all just a big family, and we all kind of need each other, you know, because without the cast, we're just an orchestra performing, you know, without, we don't have the storytelling that the cast has, and without us, the cast is, you know, a little bit empty. So I think it's 
it's a really big family, which is really great. I think mm-hmm. It's really special. Um, yeah. I don't know how this compares to other shows you've been on. But. It's it it depends you know some shows are all different because they're different mixes of, of different people and 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 it changes as shows run on I mean some of my shows that I've been on have run like two or three years so it changes as cast members change and sometimes orchestra members leave and new ones come in and things like this but um it's it's really nice the real, one of the really nice things about Les Mis is but aside from the the fact that the people are just so nice and the cast members and and Will obviously knows them a lot better than I do because he's been with them longer and I'm just I'm just getting to know them but. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that um, with like dressing and hair that happens actually downstairs right near the pit, and so we all run into each other backstage throughout things, and so we're getting to know each other that way because it's not so much that like the cast is up on the fourth floor and we're down in the basement all the time and stuff like that. Um, and also there's a little gathering that we do every Saturday night after the show, and and you know lots of the cast and lots of the band and lots of the crew shows up to that, and so we hang out and and uh, and get to get to know each other better that way too. Great. Okay. And the other question that I had related to that, you were talking a little bit about, you know, the actors and how they interact with you and hang out together. Do you think that this has created like a lifelong friendships for you guys? And what do you see yourselves doing when Les Mis ends, when you leave these friendships that you've created here? I mean, the nice thing about this in New York, it's not like tour, you know, where we ended tour and you know, I have some great friends that I made in, in that show who now live in Los Angeles, you know, who I'm lucky right. if I see once a year, you know, that kind of thing. The nice thing is we all live here in New York, and it's despite the fact that it's a huge city and you sometimes feel like there's so many people, that it's a really small, tight scene. Yeah. Um, you know, you run into people. I run into people from tour who live in New York now all the time. Um, I'm in the show with some of my best friends from tour. Um, so I feel like when you... When you make lifelong friendships now in New York, you stay in contact, and you know it's, yeah. it's not so much about it's not like tour when the tour disbands. You really feel like you you know, people go to all corners of the country. Right. You know when this show ends or when people leave the show, they go down the street, you know, to another show, and you just run into them between shows. You know, you see a lot of people all the time. Right. Yeah. And after you've been here for a while, the same you know you you develop very long relationships with people and friendships with people who come back. The two violinists that are on our show, who who I sit right next to and Will sits Will sits on the other side of me, so the four of us are in the front row. The two violinists with us are were actually on South Pacific with me for two and a half years, and so I know them really well. And when we started working, we we already knew how to play together. We already knew how to sort of like work out differences and and like sort of work out phrasings and. And, and methods for playing together and ensemble issues and stuff like that. Um, everybody in the band, I've known everybody in the band except one person. Wilson is the, is the one person that I didn't know before our show, our percussionist. Um, and, and lots of them, Keith Bonner, our flutist, and I actually went to college together in Cleveland. So we've known each other for over 20 years. And we have a, and we have a trio together that we, you know, that we started, so we play together all the time. Um, and, and, and it's great. There are lots of, and there are a lot of cast members that I run into all the time from other shows that I've done in the past, um, just on the street sometimes as well as just in other shows. Um, there were lots of people, there were several people on Follies that were on, that were on South Pacific with me that we got to hang out and be friends. Um, and so when we moved over there, seeing them backstage was just like seeing old friends and, um, and I'm sure it'll be the same for this. And so, what are your plans for when you finish up with Les Mis? What are you looking down the road? What do you guys think you're going to be doing? I mean, I joke that it's never going to end, Les Mis. Right? <laughs> um, so as David says, all shows We can all us. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't, I mean, I just moved to New York. So for me, it's, this is just a matter of like getting settled and getting, you know, getting my feet planted a little bit more in a city, which I've never had the opportunity to do before. Right. You know, it's, it's nice being in a place for less than a week. Or for more than, I'm sorry, for more than a week. It's nice to be somewhere, you know, for an extended period of time. Um, so, I mean, I, for me, it's just a matter of, like, getting settled, and then when Les Mis ends, you know, you figure something else out. Mm-hmm. Um, the nice thing is that it's New York. You know, there's so many opportunities. I love I love teaching. I love doing a lot of, like, sort of nonprofit work as well. So if Les Mis ends, you know, hopefully I can jump into, you know, a bit more of the nonprofit music scene and, you know, do a little bit more, like, I don't want to say music activism, but like you know, get get my you know hands dirty in the community a little bit more than I've been able to in the past. Mm-hmm. But um, but you know that's sort of long term future, hopefully, like right. many many years down the road. Yeah, right. It's my midst, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, certainly, certainly, every all of us really you know hope that our show is going to run forever, and we make lots of jokes about that. But 
Um, but you know, whenever you know, whenever the show ends, you know, things will things will be where they are, and in, in the other things in my career. I mean, I do a bunch of other stuff besides shows. So so, and I built that up over the years. So there are three orchestras that I'm that I'm principal of in the area that I play with, and and you know, I sub in a lot of other things. I play in some ballets. I play some orchestra things. Um, and, and I do some teaching, and so basically I, you know, my career from year to year, depending on whether I have a show or whether I don't have a show, sort of becomes a different sort of mix of all those things. Um, I'm, and, and so, and I'm always looking for new things to start doing. I'm starting some lectures now at universities on some, on some, uh, on math and tuning, which is really exciting, and, and some other, you know, so, so there'll definitely be, I'm always looking for new opportunities for things to do. Um, you know, and so whenever Les Mis happens to end, which will be very sad, but when it does, they'll, you know, I'll fill up my time with some other stuff. Okay, well, that's all the specific questions that I had for you. Do you guys have anything that you want to add or share with the audience at Broadway World? I don't know. I mean, I think it's really special that we get to, you know, that we get some attention as musicians. Yeah. And, you know, I think we, part of us love being in the pit because we're not seen all the time. There is a certain comfort in that. But at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. we're down in the basement away from everybody, so it's nice to get a little attention, which is yeah. really lovely, especially for a show like Les Mis, you know, where the music is an additional character, really, in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of... Sometimes Sometimes it feels like... Um, one, one of the weird things, one of the, one of the strange things about playing in, in, a, in a Broadway pit is that part of your job is, is, in addition to basically supporting the actors and doing things like that, it is is to is to be really solid and stable for them, so that anything that happens on stage, they feel incredibly comfortable. And if they change the timing, or if something happens, if somebody falls, if something happens like that, they feel really secure in their acting that they can do whatever they need to, and we'll be there to support them. So so being in that supporting role is sometimes different for you know for a lot of musicians because I mean we're all performing artists. And we all have, you know, we all have egos and that desire to sort of be in the spotlight and shine and do things like that. And so sometimes it does feel a little bit like, you know, like we're buried down in the basement and nobody really knows we're there and, and stuff's going on like that. But um, but feeling like, but but that's one of the great things that I that I focus on, you know, sometimes if I ever feel like that is that is that my job is to make the actors on stage feel as safe as possible so that they can really shine. And um, and that's a, you know, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. I agree with you in that respect, and I think that's probably why I really wanted to do this. I did get to know Will a little bit while he was on the tour, yeah. so it was just kind of one of those things that just sort of felt right, because you do get underappreciated sometimes. But at the same time, I see a lot of chatter on Facebook and things like that about how incredible the orchestras are in these shows. So mm -hmm. kudos to you that's guys great. for doing such a good job. Thank We're you. impressed. Keep Thank doing you. it. Thanks. And I appreciate your time. I'm going to stop the broadcast and then we can chat for a second. Hold on a second.